When I take a look at my top five videos so far, yeah, four of them are about retro motorcycles. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit afraid to make this video. The last time I said anything even remotely negative about Triumph's modern classics, I got comments like this one. Basically, I probably shouldn't say anything negative about retro bikes, but you know what? I can't stand it anymore. I have to say my piece because it's a big part of my motorcycling journey, so here it is. Before you go thinking that I am hating on retro motorcycles or that I'm coming from a place of, you know, just not liking them, that is the furthest from the truth. This is a segment of bikes that I find really interesting. I was this close to buying both a Bonneville and an Interceptor, two bikes we'll talk about at length today, and ultimately I do believe that retro motorcycles are more than just hipster crap like Jensen Beeler believes. I think, I think it's, it's in a category of its own that's just called heritage hipster bullshit. It's right up there with a Bonneville. Wait a minute. Yeah, but Bonnevilles have become modern at this point. They just look old. Yeah, they're fake carburetors. Yeah. It's same idea. Carburetors. Though. Same. Just, I, it's just hipster, masturbatory things to right, put well, in your garage. Well, well and, I've got and your And 10 years from now, we're not going to be talking about that. You don't think so? No. 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 For me, retro motorcycles capture something that so many other kinds of bikes just don't. The feels, you know, the nostalgia, the simplicity, the beauty, so many things that motorcycles should be about that you just don't get from like a Honda CB300R or a Kawasaki Ninja. In many ways, these bikes use more premium materials, well, less plastic at least, sometimes. There's really no it's maintenance got, on this, really. It's got metal. Look, metal <laughs> like the way that. you like it, yeah, no yeah. plastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is even, well, the fact. <laughs> So why is it we're talking about the problem with retro motorcycles in this video? Well, for me, it starts with the why. Why is it that companies are making motorcycles that look like motorcycles of the past? And specifically, what is it about the bikes that they're copying or emulating that cause us to still be so fascinated with them? To the point where companies will invest millions and millions of dollars just into design, just to make their bikes look as much like those bikes as possible. Because for me, that is where the problem lies. Three motorcycles really stand out for me in this space, although there are a ton of retro motorcycles these days. I've made a bunch of videos about them, and especially about some of the more obscure ones. But we have the Royal Enfield Interceptor and Continental GT. Really the Interceptor though, that's kind of the popular one. Then we have the Kawasaki W800, not super popular. And of course, the Triumph Bonneville range. What is it that these bikes have in common? Well, they're all emulating the British bikes of the 1960s. I know the W800 is actually based on an old Kawasaki, and it's the Kawasaki W series from the 60s, but that bike itself was an attempt at making a Bonneville or just a British competitor, something that would be competitive to Triumph and BSA. So what is it that made the British bikes from the 60s, and specifically the Triumphs, what is it that made those bikes so special and so legendary? For me, two things stand out. The 60s Triumphs were exceptional because of their performance and their design. British motorcycling really hit its peak or its pinnacle in the 1960s. This is really the best that they had to offer. British bikes of the 60s, specifically that of Triumph and Norton and BSA, they were the fastest, lightest, best looking motorcycles in the world and everybody wanted one. While the Japanese manufacturers were out there making smaller, lower CC bikes, and selling crazy amounts of them. The 60s had the British motorcycle industry making really awesome bikes. They were really stubborn. You know, the path forward for the British bikes would have been to make small motorcycles, but they didn't like that. They didn't want to make those because they wanted to make what they consider real motorcycles. Now, if you wanna read a really good book about this, there is a book that I'm gonna link down below on basically what killed the British motorcycle industry. There's a lot of other things, but a huge part of it was that they wanted to keep making the fastest possible motorcycles that were light, that were easy to handle, unbelievably fun. They just wanted to keep making these like large capacity roadsters. These bikes were made to tear up turns. They were made to race, honestly. And even the bike that I ride, this old Triumph, which is a 500, it's not the 650 Bonneville, I just cannot believe how fast and how light it is. Often when I ride it and when I like get on the throttle, I think about how fast it must have felt in 1968 when that bike came out. My motorcycle is a T100 and the Bonnevilles of this time were T120s and that designation basically had to do with top speed. The Bonnevilles of the late 60s, these were arguably the best bikes produced by Triumph at least like the old Triumph, they produced 
about 47-ish horsepower, and they weighed about 380 pounds wet, maybe a little bit more. And all of that coming from a 650cc engine. Now, current Bonnevilles, and specifically the 900cc Bonnevilles, produce about 65 horsepower, but they weigh in at around 500 pounds wet. So that puts the current 900cc bikes at a slightly better power to weight ratio. Now, the T100 of today was actually worse, like last year, with 55 horsepower. Like, the power to weight ratio was better on the old Bonnevilles than the current T100 until they upped it to basically have the street twin horsepower. Now, if you wanted, you could jump into the 70s with the 750 Bonnevilles, and in that case, it would be much closer as they produce around 52 horsepower and weighed in just a bit more. I think those would actually have a better power to weight ratio, but that's not really the bike we're comparing. It's the 60s British bikes that these new bikes are really emulating. Regardless, we're talking about a much smaller engine producing almost as much power in a lighter package. Now for Royal Enfield and with the Interceptor, it's actually a pretty sad picture. The classic Interceptor of the 60s produced about 52 horsepower, which is crazy, and it weighed about 418 pounds, so a little more than the Triumphs, while the current Interceptor only makes 47 horsepower and weighs a whopping 437 pounds dry, so probably closer to like 460 wet. So it's heavier, it produces less power, basically that old bike at least in a straight line would beat the new one now that wouldn't mean much if we weren't talking about bikes from 50 years ago but these numbers were back then and to say the least modern classics put out numbers that are just absolutely nothing special now last is the w800 by kawasaki a motorcycle that makes about 48 horsepower and weighs 500 pounds wet <laughs> The original Kawasaki W1 weighed, uh, I don't know, 100 pounds less <laughs> and produced a couple more horsepower. Again, just absolutely way faster. So in terms of performance, the only company that's making power that isn't entirely embarrassing is Triumph, especially when you move up in the range to bikes like the Speed Twin and the Thruxton and even the T120, but the T120 is pretty heavy. We'll talk about these bikes a bit later, so just hold on to that. But a good amount of this comes down to emissions. Companies are having to make their bikes bigger and bigger just to create decent power because so much is lost with emissions. It's not like the 900cc engine that Triumph makes couldn't produce like 80 horsepower. It could easily. It's just tuned in a certain way and because of like the emissions regulations, it's just not producing a lot of horsepower. Now in terms of design, retro motorcycles are inherently unoriginal. <laughs> so hear me out. British bikes from the 60s weren't just fast they were the coolest things that you could have. This is why people like Steve McQueen and Bob Dylan and Clint Eastwood, countless other famous cool people rode them. Triumph's design was beautiful, it was sleek and simple, yet aggressive and honestly just perfect. They stood out from the rest of the bikes because there was an attention to detail that just wasn't present in like Hondas or even a lot of European bikes. The British motorcycle manufacturers cared so much about their motorcycles, which sounds silly, but for them it wasn't just about money or producing you know, the most possible bikes, it was about making bikes that are special, the kinds of motorcycles that turn heads everywhere that they go. Now do modern classics do that? Absolutely, but it isn't because they're original, it's because they're copycats. You know, it's because of their association with those old bikes and with that old design. Now, if this is making you mad, just stick with me. Let me give you a little bit of an anecdote to kind of make sense of this. Imagine Ducati went out of business like next year. So no more Panigales, no more Ducati monsters, no more Street Fighters. But 40 years later, when motorcycle design had just completely moved on, let's say nobody is making like the typical sport bike. Everything just looks different. Let's say Ducati is revived. It's a completely new brand. It's not the same brand, it's not the same people involved, it's just somebody who bought the name. And just like Triumph, instead of focusing their energy on performance the way that they used to, they just made motorcycles that weirdly looked a lot like the Ducatis of today. But they actually produced the same or less power than the original Ducatis of today. So let's say every bike was producing like 300 horsepower, and they were still making bikes that produced 150 to 200 horsepower. But they looked the same, and kinda sounded the same. They're just like more civilized, more for like riding around town. See, there's no like originality in that in terms of design, in my opinion. Whereas the Ducatis of today are original. They're like truly beautiful on their own and in their own right. Yes, they're inspired by the bikes of their past and you can see this progression among their bikes, but they're not like wholesale copies of anything. And in the case with virtually every or honestly every modern classic that anybody is making, 
the bikes don't look as good as the old ones. The new Triumphs are cool, they're sweet, they're some of the bikes that really made me interested in motorcycling, but when I got my eyes on the old Triumphs, I realized the old Triumphs look way better. They're simpler, they're sleeker, they're smaller, the lines are cleaner, they don't have these big bulbous tanks. There's so many things that I just like more about the old Triumphs in terms of design. But I think you get my point. In so many ways, modern classics just don't capture the same spirit as the vintage bikes that they're emulating. They're heavy, they're slow, and they're relatively unoriginal, whereas the original bikes of the 60s were fast, light, and completely original in their design. Now in my situation, I said this was kind of personal, because for me, motorcycling is not something that I do like for commuting, it's just for fun, it's just a side thing for me, it's just a hobby, like I don't need my motorcycle to be running perfect all the time. I just decided to go buy an original Triumph, because that's the bike I liked, it's the bike I found compelling, I was drawn to it, so I did it, and honestly I'm even happier now that I own it than I thought I would be. Like I thought I would be like, oh man, this was a bad purchase. And now I'm thinking the opposite. Like I love that this is the bike I own and that this is the bike I ride. And for me, working on it a little bit isn't a bad thing. Now my bike ended up being super reliable. I'm really lucky. But I know there's going to come a time where, yeah, I'm going to have to work on it even more. But for those of you who want that look, you know, that old school design, but you want a modern bike, I guess it's fine. You know, I would personally prefer that retro motorcycles be a little more on the cutting edge, which does bring me to a few modern classics that I actually do find really amazing. And first is the Triumph Speed Twin. Now that is a bike that makes sense. It's very fast for a modern parallel twin. Not unbelievably fast, but like it is pretty fast. It's lighter than every other bike in the modern classic range. It's quick and everybody who rides it loves it and is surprised by how like performance oriented it is. That bike makes sense. That is the kind of retro bike that I find interesting. And you know, it is somewhat of an original take on this old school design. So I absolutely love that bike. I would totally buy one. Now let's jump a bit more out there. The MV Agusta Super Veloce is a bike I've talked about a lot. This is a bike harkening back to the Italian race bikes of the 60s and 70s, but it's still thoroughly original in its design. I guess it's sort of unfair to use MV Agusta here, but they're just so far ahead of everybody when it comes to design, or at least far ahead of most companies. But this bike has modern technology and power. It's got that sweet triple engine that is like pretty just like bonkers. For me, this is a modern classic that gets me excited. I just wish it had like even more audacious power. Not that I would ever own it, <laughs> but like if they upped that three cylinder engine to like a 1200 that produced like 200 horsepower, that would be insane. And honestly, it would make sense. And this brings me back to the last bike, one that is set to release pretty soon, which is the new Triumph Speed Triple RR. Sort of a knockoff of the Super Veloce, honestly. I would be shocked if they were not influenced by the Super Veloce. But it has that cool retro style, but it produces ridiculous power, like 180 some odd horsepower. That's a bike that captures the spirit that I'm talking about. That is a modern classic. It really is, it looks old, it's retro, but it's so crazy and performance oriented and cutting edge and interesting. I think I'm just saying that I want more. Like I just want more originality in this space. Bikes with more original designs inspired by different bikes, you know, not just bikes of the 60s. Make a bike that's inspired by, you know, a Bruff Superior from the 20s or an early teens bike or, you know, something from the 80s. We just need more interesting motorcycles in this space, not just copy of like the old Bonneville. I want to see more originality and a tad more performance, a bit less weight without having to spend so much money. I want motorcycles that are, you know, maybe the same or just a little more than the Interceptor 5, 6, 7,000, but make them have all the tech on them, you know, make them lighter and make them faster. And I know that this is possible because the Triumph Trident is a perfect example. This is pretty much what I'm talking about. It is definitely retro in some ways, but you know, why couldn't the Bonneville be the same as the Trident? Why couldn't it produce more power, way less, and have more tech like the Trident does and still be like $8,000. For me, it's almost, I don't know, it's kind of a shame. You know, what happened to these bikes? That these were originally bikes that were at the top of the food chain. You know, the Triumph Bonneville is such a legendary motorcycle. This is a bike that was like setting world records for speed and winning races. But now the Bonnevilles are just like these domesticated around town, like first time bikes. Jay Leno talks about the fact that the old Bonneville had a sticker on it that said for the expert rider only. But now what are Bonnevilles? Well, they're almost like
like beginner bikes. I don't know. It's just kind of sad. These innovative, beautiful, powerful machines are now some of the slowest, heaviest things that you can get on two wheels. I don't know. It just feels kind of wrong, which is why in the end, I just decided to go with the original. And honestly, I couldn't be happier.